Okay, so then we can make a start uh, in looking at manufacturing of ceramic matrix composites. So there are quite a number of techniques to manufacture ceramic matrix composites. So uh, the some of the technique that I am going to focus in this unit would be chemical vapor infiltration, CVI technique, the liquid silicon infiltration, LSI, the polymer infiltration and pyloresis, the PIP, ceramic slurry infiltration, CSI, and direct metal oxidation process, or we call it DMOX, and finally the sintarin. The sintarin could be uh, the last stage of most of the processes actually to minimize the porosity of the ceramic materials. Okay, but how, however, I'm going to look into a bit more detail of these three processes, uh, CVI, LSI, and sintarin actually. Okay, the other processes could be looking into, but not as detailed as the those three processes. But however, I would always recommend you to look into uh, the, the uh, other extra reading, book chapters and recent journal articles to expand your knowledge actually. So that extra reading should be really useful for you to understand uh, the latest development in the composite field because it is a really dynamic and uh, the fast moving field. Okay, to start with, we can look at uh, quite a few uh, the generic information relating to the manufacturing of CMCs, and then we can uh, the look into these individual processes actually. Uh, okay, so we consider several parameters uh, that we call performance, and under performance, it could be manufacturing, interfacial phenomena, interface and interface, mechanical behavior, porosity, there are several things to be considered, and uh, the particulate or the a short fiber or particle uh, particle reinforced composites we can use hot pressing or the powder techniques we can start with the ceramic powders and then we can do the processing it is well established and long fibers so techniques we have to uh, develop more techniques and then it is not well developed and it is under research stage and then they are developing at the moment okay so general uh, the fabrication uh, the procedure or the route for CMCs, so initially we have to produce the preforms, okay, preform preparation, and uh, similar to polymer matrix composites, maybe we can have prepreg, and then uh, the deposition of the interfaces. So that is an extra step, which is not in uh, this, uh, the uh, PMCs. As I mentioned before, this is because of the weak interface concept. So we have interface coating uh, on top of the uh, fiber surfaces. Uh, to uh, the promote the fiber pull out and then matrix infiltration so then we deposit the matrix materials on top of the reinforcement and finally so it could be machining and then heat treatment processes for consolidation or to uh, the increase the density okay or minimize the porosity so these are the four main stages of CMC manufacturing processes the preform and uh, the interface deposition and matrix deposition after that the final treatments for machining or maybe heat treatments so most of the processes in uh, cmc's you have to provide the heat treatments so main, mainly because of the porosity so we have to minimize the porosity of the structure so by, by just doing some treatments we can reduce the porosity up to some level from 30 to maybe uh, up to 10 percent Okay, so we, we have to reduce it by heat treatment procedures. So traditional techniques as like uh, the uh, hot pressing and sintering, they are good for the uh, hot pressing and sintering, they are good for the short fiber techniques. Okay, and but for the, uh, the sintering method, sintering method is we start from the powders. Okay, we get the ceramic powder, uh, the, uh, that is the matrix material. After that, so we mix it with something and then use the temperature, high temperature to form into a solid object. So that is the normal sintering process. So this is really good with short fibers or particles, but for the long fibers, because it has high uh, temperature involvement, so sintering processes are not good with uh, the long fiber uh, CMCs. Okay, the CVI, the chemical vapor preparation. So uh, by name you can recognize so here uh, the, we have fibers and fibers will just, uh, there's a special device. So this was developed in France in 1960s. So first of all, we can just uh, replace our fibers. Could be long fibers, mostly it is suitable for long fibers. And then after that, so we have the, the matrix materials in the form of a fluid, okay, or liquid uh, form. But so we have to use high temperature to create it as a vapor. 
Okay, we vaporize the matrix material. Uh, the because uh, the gases vapors they have low density, they can easily uh, travel up. Or maybe we can create some vacuum here. Okay, and then uh, this vaporized material will just pass through uh, the fibers. So we have to have even distribution. And then so during this process, some material will decompose or the deposit onto the fiber surface so that is the technique so by in in, in simple uh, words okay so uh, the so we have the fibers placed maybe let's say carbon fibers and then as i said before introducing the, the uh, matrix material we just use uh, the interface coating material okay we use interface coating material for the interface and then after that so we introduce uh, the matrix material so uh, the matrix could be like silicon carbide or alumina uh, or carbon carbon also. so there are some kind of fibers and matrix materials that we can use in this process okay so you see this diagram here and so it could be even short fibers but mostly suitable for the long fibers and it involves high temperature here so sometimes it could be up to 1000 or more even okay Okay, if you look at the process here, so simple uh, the simulation. So the few things here are really important. You can see here isothermal preform. So we have to maintain the temperature of the chamber. So reason why, if temperature is different, so then the decomposition rate and also the thickness or the how the decomposition or the thickness or the matrix material decomposed into or the, or the surface of the fibers, it should be different. So we want to have homogeneous a decomposition of the matrix material. For that, we should have the same temperature. If temperature is different, the reaction rate is going to be different. Here there is a chemical reaction. Okay, there is a chemical reaction, and then we assume that it's isothermal condition inside. Okay, and so uh, the the temperature decides the reaction rate. So if you look at simple uh, the equation for this one. So uh, this is one of the materials, so you could see here, so we call uh, methyl trichloroserine, okay, if you want to try to pronounce it, it's a really long word, so methyl trichloroserine, MTS, okay, so this is the chemical we have to use, chemical mixture we have to use to deposit silicon carbide on the top of the reinforcement, okay, so the reaction is simple here. So we have byproducts here. The byproduct here is the HCl. So you can see that. So there could be some health issues. So you have to properly extract the HCl uh, vapor and then uh, use it for something else or then collect it. So CH3, uh, SiCl3 plus H2. Okay. So H2 might be the carrier of the vapor. So we have the, the matrix material as a, a vapor form okay so we just use hydrogen to carry this vapor to promote the, the, the vapor flow as a carrier or maybe argon even some uh, materials which they are not that reactive uh, the gases so we call inert maybe sometimes helium or something like that so we call the carrier gas for the vapor of the material or the matrix so then we get silicon carbide and if you buy HCl, so we have uh, three chlorine and then three uh, the H here. So three HCl, H2 does not involve in the reaction. Okay, so if you remember the balancing of the equation in chemistry in A levels is stoichiometry. So we're trying to get the, the balance of the uh, components. So then finally we the silicon carbide. This is in solid form. And this is in the gaseous form, and this is in the gaseous form. Okay, so then this is the reaction for the uh, the CBI chemical vapor infiltration. So this is the the main material we are interested in, and this is the carrier gas. So, so as I mentioned, so then we can use uh, the number of other gases. So then here we just uh, the uh, used uh, the H2 uh, in the reaction that I wrote. But however, so that could be. Uh, the uh, argon or helium uh, type of uh, the uh, carrier gas uh, the which should be selected based on the type of the reactant gas actually
So therefore, we mostly select inert gases. The main reason is that so we no need to have any other extra reactions. Actually, for example, if you try to use uh, the, this reactant gas uh, to deposit silicon carbide on top of the reinforcement, so then we no need to have any extra reactions or any uh, disturbance to the uh, the process. Actually, so therefore, we should uh, only uh, uh, allow to take place the, this reaction only. So therefore, the carrier gas should be selected carefully not to uh, create any other extra reactions now. So we use this uh, the uh, reactant gas and then silicon carbide and then uh, the HCl here. So, and then this H2 stays as a, simply as a carrier, so not contributing to the reaction here. And also you know that uh, the HCl is a type of uh, the acidic uh, material. So in here we just uh, the, uh, get it as a byproduct in the gaseous form. So then we have to remove it carefully. Uh, and then after that we can use it for uh, the other other work maybe to uh, the produce uh, the HCl uh, the acidic material to be used in other applications. So likewise, so we will have some byproducts during this reaction, uh, but so we can remove those byproducts and also we can select the suitable carrier gas depending on the type of the reactant that we use. Uh, and here we have to make sure that there should be no any other extra reaction to disturb uh, the the process that we're going to consider here in the CVI process. So if you consider some of the most commonly used uh, the materials during the CVI process actually, so we uh, try to use this process mostly to deposit uh, the silicon carbide using this reactant gas and also we can try to deposit alumina uh, using uh, some other uh, the reactant gases. So for the alumina, so this is the the reactant gas actually. So therefore, uh, with CVI, so we mostly uh, try to uh, the the uh, deposit uh, silicon carbide and alumina as most common materials. But there could be several other uh, the reactant gases uh, that we can use with the CVI process. So here you could see the list of uh, the materials or the matrix materials that we can deposit using CVI process. And then these are the related the, the reactant gases to deposit uh, those matrix materials. For example, if we want to deposit titanium carbide, so this is the, re the reactant gas, and then silicon carbide, so we already discussed, so this is the reactant gas. And, and also here you could see the, the reaction temperature for each particular reaction actually. If you want to deposit uh, the, uh, some sort of uh, the matrix material, so then uh, we have to use this reactant gas and also this reaction should take place between this temperature range. Actually, these uh, the temperature ranges are depending on the melting temperature of some of these materials here, right? So therefore, we have to control the condition. As I mentioned before, the reaction should take place uh, within an isothermal environment. That means the temperature of the, the, the reinforcement should be uniform. Otherwise, the matrix material will be deposited on top of the reinforcement in different levels or in different scales. Okay, so therefore, controlling the condition should be really important. Right, so then uh, the here let's try to look at uh, the another possible uh, the reaction to deposit, for example, let's say the alumina material. Then, if you want to deposit the alumina on top of the, uh, the reinforcement, so this is the reactant gas that we have to use. So the temperature range is 900 to uh, the 1000, uh, the 100 degrees. So so then what would be the reaction if you want to deposit alumina uh, matrix uh, using CVI process? Okay, then so we can start with this particular reactant gas, which is uh, the Al, uh, the Cl3, CO2, and then H2 actually. And then we want to deposit alumina, which is AlO2, O3. And then so there could be byproducts here, which should be uh, HCl actually. And also there could be some uh, the carbon monoxide as well. Right, so if you try to balance this, uh, the reaction here, it could be uh, two AlCl3 and then uh, the three CO2 and also uh, the three H2 as well. And then we will get, uh, the, if you try to look at here, the how many chlorines in the left hand side, it is uh, six chlorines we can see. Therefore, we could see that uh, the six HCl here and then if you have three carbons uh, in the left hand side then here to balance we can get uh, the three carbon monoxide as well if you try to uh, think about the state of each of these uh, the components actually the alumina initially it was actually as a gaseous form but so we deposit as a solid on top of the reinforcement and then hcl should be in the gaseous format but so then we can collect it 
in the suitable way and then carbon monoxide should also be in the gaseous state right so then we just uh, the the melt this uh, the main reactant actually so it, this also should be in the gaseous state so after melting right so then this is the balanced reaction if you want to uh, the deposit the alumina uh, uh, using the cvi process so then by using this reaction so we can just uh, the deposit uh, the the uh, uh, alumina on top of a re reinforcement actually uh, up to the suitable thickness so we have to control the reaction rate and also we should know how long it will take to deposit the desired thickness uh, of the the matrix material uh, to stop the reaction actually okay hope it is clear okay so likewise so we can just uh, the uh, write down the reactions for the other materials listed in this table actually so if you want to deposit uh, those matrix materials so similar type of reactions could be written with uh, the suitable carrier gases and also there could be uh, several uh, other uh, the matrix materials that we can use with this process uh, due to the the ongoing research in this area actually lots of research activities are ongoing relating to the cvi process to manufacture ceramic matrix composites this is mainly because of the some of the advantages of this process such as so we can have a very pure a matrix uh, the material using this process at high temperatures so likewise uh, so we have some benefits and also there are some uh, the disadvantages of this process as well okay right then let's try to look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of this process some of the advantages and disadvantages so one of the, the main thing here, we can have a very pure matrix material because we're going to use vapor. So even to uh, the, get the water, we just do uh, the condensation, isn't it? So if you want to, uh, if you know this bottled water, so we, we produce it by just vaporizing it. So then after that, we just condense the water. So then we can have very pure water even. So if you want to get the very pure water, we just boil it and uh, allow it to vaporize and after that condense. So then we can have, then here we have using a vapor and then we after that we deposit that vapor on top of the surfaces so then it's a pure matrix and the low damage to the fibers but okay you have to uh, remember that so then we have high temperatures inside the chamber so therefore so we have some we should have we should have to use some fibers which we can work in this elevated temperatures in high temperatures so maybe carbon uh, fibers could be okay with that okay and in situ interfaces in situ means so we don't need to uh, the move the workpiece okay that is just in situ experiment so they know the uh, manufacturing techniques we leave it as it is and then we can get the final product okay in situ and the near net shape means so ideally we can we have less finishing steps so ideally the, we can get the final product most of the time so without doing any uh, finishing steps okay the process is slow depending on the reaction and also depending on uh, these uh, the flow rates but there could be some uh, possibility of having porosity so you can assume now initially the, the vapor will travel through the uh, the free form but after some time because it's already deposited some material there will be some blockage of the uh, the, uh, the path for the gas so therefore maybe gas might not reach into some areas of the uh, the uh, fiber after some time so this could create some level of porosity in this structure okay okay here i have listed uh, the possible advantages and disadvantages of the cvi process for you to refer here you could see possible uh, the advantages as i mentioned before low fiber damage due to relatively low infiltration temperatures but you have to understand that what is the meaning of the relative uh, here so we have to just uh, the uh, select suitable fibers to match the temperatures that we're going to use uh, during the process so that temperature should depend on the the matrix material that we're going to deposit uh, on the reinforcement uh, matrices of high purity so i discussed already so because we just uh, try to deposit a vapor uh, on on top of a reinforcement material so then we can have a highly pure matrix actually so low infiltration temperatures produce uh, low residual uh, mechanical stresses if we use relatively low temperature residual stresses may be lower has mechanical properties that means compared to its original uh, the constituent that means that the ceramic materials are normally brittle so but uh, as we have now reinforcement so we can improve the properties like strength and toughness and also kind of elongation as well uh, for the ceramic matrix composites uh, then uh, the good thermal shock resistance so that is one of the main advantages of the cmc's as i mentioned before we can use in high temperature applications like the furnaces uh, the gas turbine engines especially in the hot section 
and also in afterburners in aircraft and so on. So the CMCs uh, even uh, can go for higher temperatures than the original ingredients. Therefore, it is an advantage uh, the, that we can have here. Increased creep and oxidization resistance. So then we can avoid uh, the, some issues like uh, the creep and oxidization. Uh, so with CMCs, uh, that is also one of the advantage here. So matrices of various compositions may be fabricated here. So that means actually, if you want to just deposit only one uh, matrix, that's fine. So we can use the, the suitable uh, the material and then get the vapor of it. So if you want to have another material uh, on top of the, the reinforcement, so then we can stop the process and then we can start just uh, the delivering other form of vapor if you want to deposit a combination of matrices. But so then here we can have that uh, the ability. So as long as we can just uh, the control the, the conditions, so then we can just select the suitable matrix materials or combinations or compositions. So it is easy, easy to select. Of uh, course, we have the facilities. Only thing is we have to just uh, the, uh, the uh, match the conditions and the temperatures with the suitable matrix material. So then interfaces may be deposited in situ. So then I mentioned you before that uh, the weak interface concept is uh, quite uh, popular in uh, CMCs. And therefore, we might just use uh, the interface material and then the matrix material. So uh, again, uh, so this can be done uh, without any trouble. So then uh, that is an advantage in this process. So then if you look at some of the possible disadvantages of the CUI process, so it could be a slow process. So of course, the uh, deposition rate may be really slow, but it depends on uh, the, the type of the matrix material. But it may take uh, the up to several weeks for some uh, particular matrix materials. Uh, depending on the size of the component uh, and also depending on the arrangement of the reinforcement within the uh, chamber okay so therefore it could be slow but again it depends on the the, uh, the size uh, of the component and then the geometrical arrangement of the reinforcements and also the type of the matrix material that we're going to use so kind of high residual porosity i mentioned you again so uh, here there could be some kind of issues with the porosity. So then we cannot control the process inside the chamber. Once we start the process, what we do is we just provide the, the matrix material in the gaseous forms into the chamber, and then it will travel through the, the gaps uh, uh, across the reinforcement. So there could be some blockages, or maybe there could be some uh, the places uh, the, this gaseous material cannot reach. And in that case, so there could be some sort of porosity, but by experience, so then uh, we might have to control uh, the, the, this process, but inside the process is mostly a black box. That means we cannot control much. So it should happen by itself uh, in the way it, it occurs inside. So therefore, there could be some porosity depending on the flow behavior and the depending on the conditions that we use. So therefore, controlling the, the conditions are really important to avoid uh, the any early uh, uh, the deposition or so on. So uh, we should maintain the proper paths of the gases uh, if you want to deposit uh, some particular uh, matrix material in different locations. But there might be some places within the reinforcement, you might not get uh, the, some sort of uh, the exact thickness of the, the matrix material and so on. So therefore, some sort of porosity is possible, but by experience and controlling conditions, we can minimize that. Uh, and also high capital uh, and production cost. So you can understand, so we have to have some components which can uh, the support or withstand in high temperatures. So therefore, we should have to uh, have some uh, kind of relatively high initial capital to set up the system. So, but once you set up the system again, you have to maintain it. Uh, so therefore, uh, this process could be a kind of expensive process, uh, but uh, the uh, once you have the initial investment, so after that, it might be okay, but still we should have to do some proper maintenance because high temperatures means, so uh, it could create problems actually. Okay, so these are the disadvantages, but this process has been using for a long time now uh, to manufacture ceramic matrix composite. So this is one of the best processes that we can uh, use to uh, provide a very pure matrix materials on top of a reinforcement. Okay, so this is all I want to discuss about the CVI process, but, but uh, it is always recommended for you to read extra materials to expand your knowledge. Okay, so then after that, we can just look at the liquid silicon infiltration process.